What's up, I'm Rata Sochenda, and in this video, I'll take you through the process of how I made these rock sliders for my 4th gen 4Runner. This video is part of an ongoing series of my journey on exploring metal fabrication. Also, make sure to stick around to the end to get a preview of what's coming up next. I started off by taking measurements of the body pinch weld from front to back. Because I was going for a simple, clean, and low profile look, this is what I decided on. Each end has a 45 degree bend with a 20 degree kick up. Now let's build. I started off by mitering each end of the main square tube using my bandsaw and my homemade welding table for support. Then made the end caps to close it off. So now that we have the two by two main piece capped off, uh, I could have left the welds like this, but kind of wanted to smooth it out, make it look good. Uh, I actually use a, a three-step process. Uh, this, this involves a 36 3M fiber disc uh, to knock off the main, the main uh, welds. And then I use a uh, 40 grit flap disc to kind of blend that out. And then I switch over to a palm sander with 80 grit. So when I paint it, I don't see any rough sand marks. With the main tube complete, I can reference it to get the remaining measurements. One being the distance from the car frame to the main tube. Second, how low I wanted the main tube to sit from the pinch weld of the body. And last, how far out I wanted the step portion to be from the body. Now that I was confident with the rest of my measurements, I moved forward with building everything else piece by piece. I grabbed a piece of round tubing and headed over to my tube bender to make the bends. This one was made by JD Squared, mounted on a custom stand I made for it. Before I would make my first bend, I used my homemade degree indicator. This will help me make sure that my second bend sits in the same plane as the first bend. After the first bend was created, I measured the distance from where the first bend ended, then marked where the next bend will begin. Next was to add the 20 degree kick up and trim the bent ends. I used my table dogs to get the tube aligned and slid a tape measure underneath until it was close enough. To make it easier to trace where I would need to mark my trim ends, I used a laser lever as a guide. After the ends were trimmed, I checked to make sure the spacing was the same from front to back. Then proceeded to tack it into place. Then did a quick test fit to make sure I was happy with the fit up. Okay, next is to add the uh, center pieces. This is uh, greatly going to increase the rigidity of the actual slider itself uh, from flexing. Uh, I'm going to add one right in the center and then one on the left and right side. And how we're going to do that is 
pretty much get your tube. Uh, mark your pieces here and here. Um, but to do it more accurately, um, I cheated a little bit and 3D printed my own coping guide, uh, which is this guy here. Uh, I know there's a few products on the market um, that do the same thing. How this works is you get your tube, slide it through. Then once I get that, I'll mark it with the Sharpie and mark the bottom with the Sharpie and then take most of the bulk material off by using a cutoff wheel. And then uh, what I'm gonna do next is sand off the remaining either with the, my angle grinder or uh, take it over to the bench grinder to massage it further. And that's gonna help me uh, accurately cut the tube so that when I do a fit up, so let's pretend that this is my tube that's already cut out. I can just easily slide it underneath and get a perfect fit up every single time. Um, this just makes it uh, more consistent cuts, uh, but you don't necessarily have to do it like this. I cheated, so um, you can do it by hand and massage it further. Um, so this is just a, a way I did it. However, a more traditional way was to notch the tube with the tube notcher. I had one laying around and figured I'd demonstrate this approach as well. This method is a lot faster for simple tube coping profiles. After the tubes were prepped, it was time to line them for tacking. I slid the piece of 1 8 inch thick plate underneath to get the 1 and 3 quarter round tube centered to the 2 by 2 square tube. Then use my digital protractor to check if they were at the 20 degree kick up. Since I wanted it to look good, I made a series of tacks to go for that dime look. Because things tend to warp as you weld, I decided to do another fit up to get the final distance measurements from the frame to the slider before cutting my main tube legs. Where you place them is also important as you want to make sure that they are clear and away from any brake cables or cable lines. For visual reference, I drew a quick template on the frame to show where my backing plate would need to be and where I would need to grind off the factory coating for a clean weld up. I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but make sure you check the sliders to clear your doors before you do all that welding. Time for some paint. I decided to try something new and went with the product called Steel It. It has some advantage over other coatings. It's anti-corrosion, can be welded over, and gives you that semi-gloss power coated look. I used two cans total that cover two full coats on each slider. Another benefit is when the sliders do get scratched up from the elements, you can easily touch it up. Now time to weld it all in.
to add some final touches, I grabbed some grip tape. I play with a few different layouts to figure out what would look best. This would help make a slip resistance for those rainy days we have up here in the Pacific Northwest. And should make it easier for my kids to get in. Too hard. Well, almost all. One, two, three, climb. Yeah. Feet, feet on there. There you go. Help, right there. I'm gonna pull it. Because you stuck around to the end of the video, as promised, here's a glimpse of what's to come on this channel. If you're interested in following along, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when new content drops. If you have any questions, ask and I'll do my best to answer them. Don't forget to check out the links in the description for more details on everything you've seen in this video. That's it for me today. See you in the next one. Later.